Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to learn about the amendment process and a little bit about the Bill of Rights in this short educational video. Um, in this image here, you see the breakdown of how we can change our Constitution by making amendments. And you'll notice how Congress is involved here and the states are involved down here. So you have Congress proposing, the states can ratify. Now, the states can propose amendments, but it is something that has never really happened. So don't worry about it. All right, let's talk about what we mean by amendments. Amendments are changes and additions made to the United States Constitution. The reason why the Founding Fathers wanted amendments to be part of our Constitution is because when they wrote the Constitution in 1787, they knew that society would change, that people would change. Because we can change the document, the Constitution is referred to sometimes as a living document because just like a living person or animal, it changes, it adapts to its environment. The amendment making process, like we said, is a very short two-step process. In order to propose an amendment, two-thirds of both chambers of Congress, the House and the Senate, must agree. Now, you'll notice here, this is just to propose. A proposal is a suggestion, just like this picture here where the man is proposing something, he has an idea, the light bulb goes off, he proposes it. In order to get the amendment ratified and join the Constitution or change the Constitution, you need three-fourths of all state legislatures to ratify or approve it. So to ratify is a fancy word for saying approve or to confirm. And you'll notice in this image the, the people are shaking hands as if they are confirming, agreeing to do something. We've talked a little bit about the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are the first ten amendments that were added to the Constitution. So these were the first ten amendments that went through the process that we just described. The first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights, the purpose of it was to list clearly that the government could not deny people certain liberties or freedoms. And the idea of the Bill of Rights, you had a large group of Americans under the, the group, the Anti-Federalists, who were not happy about this new constitution because they felt like the government was going to become authoritarian. So they added this Bill of Rights in order to say, hey government, you can't do this. Not only can you not do this in 1787, but you cannot do these things for future generations. And that gets to the question below. Why do you think the Founding Fathers wanted the Bill of Rights to be written, to have it written down? Think about that for a few seconds. If you write something down versus just saying it out loud, what does that tell you about the importance of the information? What does it tell you about how this information wants to be remembered? Yeah, you're right, I hope. The Bill of Rights was written down because when you write something down, it usually signifies that, hey, this is really important, I'm taking the time to write it down, and I want future generations to see this, to read this, not to guess or assume that people have these certain freedoms. All right, the last thing I wanna go over with you is something that most people don't know. The Bill of Rights did not originally apply to the states. That's right, Maryland, New York, all the 13 states, a lot of them had their own Bill of Rights because each state had its own constitution, but I don't want to confuse you about that. 
The Bill of Rights was originally intended to limit the national government. Remember, 1787, the Americans were still thinking about Britain, the Articles of Confederation, and they didn't want the national government, kind of like the king or the president, to take away people's rights. However, changes come after the 14th Amendment is passed in 1868 following the Civil War. The Supreme Court eventually begins to incorporate, that's a great word, incorporate. To incorporate means to include. The Supreme Court started to incorporate the freedoms of the Bill of Rights. Therefore, what that means in English, states have to make sure that people's Bill of Rights freedoms, like right to speech, speedy trial, uh, that the states cannot take those freedoms away. Now, if you take a more advanced course, you learn that not every single freedom in the Bill of Rights is something that the states have to recognize. Nevertheless, for your class, all you need to be familiar with is how the Bill of Rights at first did not apply to the, net, to the states, but now it does because of the Supreme Court making decisions. And this is some, the last thing I want to show you. I think this is kind of cool because it shows you how the Supreme Court used the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. This, this is being represented by a big old sponge. And if you'll notice, it is sucking up the amendments number 1, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9 from the Bill of Rights. So they're the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment is sucking up these Bill of Rights and squeezing out these freedoms and liberties on top of state and local governments. I think this does a really good job kind of showing you how the Supreme Court interpreted, that's their job, the, the Bill of Rights using the 14th Amendment to apply them to the states. I hope that was helpful. And I will talk to you soon. Adios.